It, it is a, yeah, it's, it's the oldest 4K camera that we have in the program, um, but it's still a really cool camera. Now this is some of the stuff that like, we just didn't <clears throat> have in there. Yeah. You need an SSD and I'll have to get a, uh, what we call a toaster. We have them in the lab, so do you know what I'm talking about? They're Where you black and you just- Plug it in mm -hmm. and then you can actually connect it to the- Yeah, it holds these and it also holds the, the thicker, larger size as well. Gotcha. This one I think is um, it's a half terabyte. Yeah, it's a half terabyte, which just plugs it. I mean, it's technically an internal hard drive uh, with an attachment, like a, um, an adapter so that it fits in the camera. And they're really pretty fast. It'd be faster than most of your SD cards that you guys have been working with. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's what, you need those special cards. They're not even that expensive or anything really anymore, and we have a few. So if you like this camera and want to use it more, let me know. And I do have like some one terabyte cards, which you could shoot on all day. So let me get into some of the things about it that <clears throat> are that are worth covering. The big uh, the big thing being that it's an internal battery, and you got to be wired in. And I, I ran the other day, and it went about an hour without recording. So if you're trying to go outside, because you said portfolio shots, you're just trying to go around and just shoot stuff. Yeah with no, like, just see something cool. Does that include in the field? Is that what you're thinking or no? Uh, I mean, like I said, we hadn't really decided, but if it's gonna be easier to do indoors, then we'll probably steer that way. I mean, we it, can- It sounded like your requirements were just a 4K format. Yeah. It didn't really matter if they were inside, outside, Either anything like that. that. <clears throat> originally said, go find clips online. Okay. Well, and this you can put in, in your portfolio yeah. too. Yeah, you that's just, why I wanted yeah, if you have the time, and you're both in cinematography, so um, there could be always a possibility that if you want to add this to your cinematography reel too, I wouldn't mind that. Let, let's look. Um, so this is it's like a 2015 model, but it's pretty. It was pretty innovative. It's, it's still a great camera, and I always have a student or two that really gets into it and wants to just use that because not everyone's trying to check it out, mainly because that battery. But if you're shooting indoors, and you know you can wire it in. It has an EF mount, so all these Canons, the Canon EF mount, Blackmagic, um, made a good decision there because they were the most common lens that we were seeing at it, like an affordable price. So, <clears throat> have you guys messed with it yet from uh, that one day? The day you had it set up, yeah. I think my favorite thing is the menu, and it records to like ProRes. It's really like. Uh, it is. I mean, you put it, you compare it to some of the menus on like the EVA one. Um, the C100, it is it is way way easier than that, I think. So I don't remember what is even on this card or anything at all. I don't know. But really, the only uh, caveat would be if you guys. <coughs> if I wasn't here because I had that card locked in my office. So, <coughs> um, but yeah, you're more than welcome to use it. I just, yeah, that like that, all those cameras take SD cards or CF Express B cards, you know, and this is the only one that takes these kind. So, <coughs> but you can edit from them too. So when you plug it in, you actually can edit from this. I just still think about media management. Yeah. Um, let's format it. XFAT, you want to format to XFAT because that way you can work on the Windows or the Apple <clears throat> and it won't make any difference. Gotcha. The other option, I can't remember, um, but a lot of those formats might be just for Mac, just for Windows. XFAT I use uh, almost all the time because I don't know if I'm going to be on a, on a Windows or we don't know what the editor is going to prefer. So that format was pretty fast. Go back in a menu. Uh, do you have any questions or you just want to play with it? It's formatted, it's ready to go. Um, I might just mess with it just to see. I think just tinker with it and see what you think if you have any questions. You can unplug it and it won't die. Um, if, and that's one of those things about like the C100 if it doesn't have a battery in you've hardwired and it pops off here, it's gonna immediately die and crash. So that's kind of convenient, but yeah, if you're going outdoors, you're gonna need to plan plan that out. 
oh, let's look at, not format. Um, no, we'll go into settings but here in a second. That's, that's just turning it on and off. Um, I would set, it's on the year 2000. I would set the date and time. It's one of those things that I just didn't do a lot early on and I, now that I've been doing this so long, I wish I had, let me go into record. So you're in ProRes 422. Here's your resolution is at 3840. But technically that's not 4K, technically it's ultra high def, but it's so close everyone just refers to it as 4K. Okay. Brandon won't mind because the assignment is still getting from that resolution, sizing it back, you know, so much, so many percent. Um, and if you remember from that one training, there's only a few frame rate options. Don't do 25, 25 is PAL, that's for Europe. Okay. Uh, the others are all options you could do. 2398, 24, 2997. Is it better so. to shoot higher <clears throat> frame on a higher resolution? Uh, so it depends on, on your camera. In this case, you're going from the potential of 24 to 30, and that's roughly like 82% of that speed. So if you slow, if you wanted to shoot in 30, you could slow it down. You put the timeline on 2398 and you slow that down and it will, it will give it a little bit of a kind of a buttery effect, but okay. it's not gonna be slow. And most people can't really tell. They do it a lot in music videos to kind of make it a little more dreamlike. Um, so I, when I'm shooting and my best option is 30 and I know I'm gonna use it for a reel or something and yeah. not an interview, I like to do 30 and then uh, just convert it to 24 okay. and post. And that's super easy. So that's an option. Now you also have your dynamic range. You have film and video. Film tends to have a larger dynamic range, might need a little more color time, but you'll be getting more colors. It might be a larger file too. But if we were to say like shoot right here on the screen screen, we could swap to video then because there wouldn't be too much on varying colors? Well, I'm, this is just your dynamic range. Okay. In cases of like if we were just getting green screen footage. If it was I think video, you color a little less, a little more finished. Um, I think you have more more range <clears throat> for color co correction and, and uh, color grading okay. when you do film. And then ProRes 422, you have, you can shoot raw, you don't have to. ProRes is nice also. And then you also could shoot a ProRes proxy, but. So you wouldn't have to convert <clears throat> later? No, but Brandon wants you to use the software, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But most of these cameras will shoot a proxy too. Uh, and that's why it's good that he's showing them to you early so you can use, like that camera will do 12K and 8K. Um, this one will do 6K. So if you shoot those and you're running that, that format, you're gonna probably wanna know proxies before you get into that stuff. So it's convenient because I wanna shoot those in cinematography later this semester. <clears throat> <coughs> We're basically starting with the photo project because that gives you guys time to learn proxies also while you're still thinking about composition and, and framing. Um, but you, I mean, dabble. I'd say ProRes, not, let's see. ProRes LT is ProRes Lite, okay? And then ProRes 422, and you have ProRes HQ, which is probably going to be a larger file, probably close to RAW. RAW, and that would be on your best. But if you're getting a really, if you're really putting time in and you want it to look good for, cinematography and you want it to look good for post two and you know you're building proxies you know shoot some high high stuff you have a half terabyte for um yeah you have a half terabyte just for messing around just for testing so okay. cool just let me know if you have any questions i'll be over there Already. um but if you wanted you could do the stop motion room hook this up to that dolly and and shoot if you felt like it if you're trying to stay inside. I mean, we don't have anything in mind exactly yet. I know, we've literally just taken an aquarium and dumped ink in the water before because we just needed to run the camera. That's just, that would be and yeah, it's just trying to do fun stuff like that. Like yes. what can we, uh, when you're in the studio, sometimes you don't have time for a story. You're just going, we just need a subject. That's why I like getting a dog running around, just film the dog. Well. Nobody's checked that out or anything, so it, it's yours as long as you need to use it till next Wednesday or whatever.